Hey Hackintosh enthusiast, so you want to dual boot your computer with pre-installed Windows together with Mac OS. You came into the right place. Let's make this easy and fast installation. I will demonstrate this on this NEC Versa Pro VGS laptop, Core i5 with 5th generation processor, 4 gigs of RAM installed, 120 gigabytes of SSD and Windows 11 Ghost Spectre. You will need at least 2 gigabytes of USB flash drive and download all these required files which can be downloaded on my website. As for the EFI, you can check this new guide that I release. It's an automated way to generate EFI for your computer. All the steps in this video are presented on my fastest installation guide that I made. You can check the description box for the link. I will install this in a single SSD drive. Since this has Windows 11 already, all I have to do is partition that drive and allocate a disk space so that I can restore the Mac OS on it. And if you have multiple drive, the process is similar. Just restore the Mac OS into that secondary drive that you have. Go and visit my website. And while you're there, I also have a link to my Amazon affiliate store. If you buy using those product links, I will have a small commission on your every purchase. I have listed all the computer parts or peripherals that are suitable for your Hackintosh. Now download all the necessary programs and restore image that will be used on this guide. Pause this video from here to see the list. For the restore image, since I'm using a Haswell processor, technically it can run natively on Monterey, but you can use Sequoia and patch it using OCLP. I already made a video about OCLP. I will just stick to Monterey for now. Insert your USB flash drive, and let's run the Ventoy program after you extracted the zipped file of it. Press Windows R and run MS Info 32. Look for the BIOS mode on that window. We will match the BIOS mode of your computer to the Ventoy app. If you have UEFI, then it's GPT. If legacy, it's MBR. Close that system information window and going back to Ventoy. Go to Option. Partition style will be GPT since I have UEFI. Your inserted USB is automatically detected from here. Now click the install button. Make sure you made a backup of your USB. This will now install Ventoy on your flash drive. Close Ventoy. Copy the Windows 10 portable ISO into your Ventoy USB flash drive. This will enable us to boot into the USB and run the Windows 10 on your USB, thus the name Portable. Double click the synchronized time dot registry. This will fix the time for both Windows and Mac OS. Open the disk management by right-clicking the Start button. Right-click on the drive C, then select Shrink Volume. From here, if you want the exact megabyte value, you can multiply your desired gigabyte by 1024. You can use this formula for the computation. I will put 54,000 megabytes for 52 gigabytes of disk space that will be used for Mac OS. Click the Shrink button to apply the partition. Close disk management. We will now restart the NEC laptop. Keep the USB plugged in. While restarting, I will rapidly press F2 for the BIOS settings. We will adjust these settings so that the Hackintosh will boot properly. Every BIOS are different if you have these options. Set them up and adjust accordingly. By the way, make sure that your BIOS is updated to its latest version. For some motherboards needs an updated BIOS for it to work out. For this laptop, I will just set the secure boot to disable and set the USB flash drive to first boot priority. Pressing F10 to save the changes and rebooting the laptop, it will now boot into Ventoy, then press Enter twice to load the Windows 10 portable. This will enable us to load into Windows 10 without actually installing it on the USB. Open the Disk Genius on the taskbar. Above the free disk space, right-click on it and select Create New Partition. On the File System type, select EFI System Partition. Then on Size of Partition, set it to Megabytes, then put 300 on the size. Type in OC on the volume label, click OK once done. Notice that your drive should be GPT partition scheme for this to work out. Click the Save All button on the upper left. Click the Yes button once prompted. Now double click the OC partition, disregard the text damaged written on it. We will now copy the EFI configuration, open the File Explorer, navigate the drive C, then Users, then Username. In my case it's Administrator. I will go to the desktop since I save it there. Yours may be in the downloads. Ensure that the EFI folder you're copying contains the subfolders OC and boot. Once you've verified this, drag the EFI folder into Disk Genius. Click the Complete button once done copying. Now go to Tools, select Set UEFI BIOS. Click the Add button, select the OC partition on the drop-down, then go into EFI folder, 
OC, then select OpenCore.EFI. Click OK. Click the Up button three times. Let's rename the boot entry name to OpenCore. Click the Save Current Boot Entry. Close Disk Genius for we are done with it. Go back to the download folder of your drive C. Install the R drive image program. Proceed with the on-screen installation. Double click the RDR file of your choice. In my case was Monterey version. Click the source disk above, then click unallocated disk space. Click next, then hit the start button to restore it on that partition that we selected. Close everything, then let's reboot. You can now remove your USB flash drive. If you've done it correctly, you will be greeted with this boot splash. Use the right arrow to select the Mac OS drive, then press enter. This will now load Mac OS for the first time on your computer. If the EFI configuration and BIOS settings was set up correctly, I will proceed for the out of the box experience. I will fast forward and see you on the desktop. I bet you didn't notice this. There is an extra free space when we restore Mac OS using R drive image. We can simply reclaim that free space using the disk utility. Click the launch pad, then others, then select disk utility. While the Monterey SSD is selected, click the partition button above. The partition next to Monterey SSD is the free space, which is 6.3 gigabytes. Click on it, then click the minus button below it. Click the apply button on the right. Then click the partition button and it will proceed to add that free space up into our Monterey SSD partition. Once done, let's try to reboot on Windows 11. I will select the Windows partition and pressing enter to boot into it. Seems we landed on Windows 11 safely. The tutorial end on this part. If in case you want to remove the Mac OS on your drive, download the Disk Genius and run it. You just need to delete the partition of the EFI of OpenCore and as well as the partition of Mac OS. Right click the partition, then select Delete Current Partition. Press Yes once prompted. Then do the same for the EFI partition of OpenCore. Click the Save All button on the upper left. Close Disk Genius, then right click the Start button and select Disk Management. On the Drive C partition, right click then select Extend Volume, click Next button twice, then click Finish button afterwards. Your Drive C is now reverted back to its original disk capacity. Need help with your Hackintosh? Provide these details to get the most effective assistance with your Hackintosh issue. Please provide as much information as possible about the following. The more detailed information you provide, the better equipped I'll be to help you diagnose and resolve the issue. Please note while I can provide guidance and troubleshooting steps, I cannot guarantee a solution for every problem Hackintoshing can be complex and some issues may require advanced knowledge or specific hardware combinations. If you encounter issues during installation, consider recording your computer screen. These recordings can be valuable for troubleshooting as they often capture important text or error messages. Once you've recorded the issue, upload the video to your YouTube channel along with your computer specifications. Compress your EFI folder, then upload it on Google Drive, adjust the share option to anyone with the link, then copy it. You can put all of the information on the description box of your video once you uploaded the recording on your channel. I will try my best to answer it whenever I am available. That's about it on this video, let me know your thoughts about this tool, and until next time, click the video on your screen that may interest you to watch and see you there.